Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from ex Question number 22. Homo sapiens evolved during Pleistocene, Oligocene, Pliocene or Miocene. Now let us quickly look at uh, the different periods of the era of modern life. So what was the era of modern life called? Now, there are many different eras like we have era of medieval, medieval life, we have the era of ancient life, we have the era of modern life. So the era of modern life is called Cenozoic. So this is the era of modern life and this era is further divided into many different periods. So if you start with the modern one which is the most recent period, the recent period is called Holocene. Before that was Pleistocene, before which was Pliocene, before that Miocene, before that it was Oligocene, still before that was Eocene and the primitive one was Paleocene. Now let us see what were the different types of living organisms which were evolving during each of these periods. So Paleocene it was for the primitive primates. So only the primitive form of primates evolved during this period. Then was Eocene when angiosperm dominance was seen that means too many angiosperm the flowering plants. So too many angiosperms were seen so this period is known as the angiosperm dominance period. And Eocene period also saw the origin of horse. So when we talk about the evolution of horse, we saw that horse started with uh, very many different uh, phases like Eohippus, Mesohippus, Merichippus and so on. So Eocene saw the beginning or origin of horses. Oligocene saw the origin of apes and apes were like our distant ancestors. Then was Miocene when, when there was continued radiation of mammals and angiosperms so continuous radiation of mammals and angiosperms then was pliocene and in pliocene ape-like ancestors of humans were seen ape-like ancestors of humans pleistocene was the period during which humans appeared and in the recent period that is the Holocene period modern man is the dominant one so modern man dominates over all other living forms right so which was the period when homo sapiens evolved or humans appeared so it was Pleistocene. so option a is the right one Question number 23, which is not a vestigial part in humans? Now, what do we mean by vestigial part? So, vestigial organ refers to that organ which is present in reduced form and do not perform any function in the body. So, basically they are present in the body but they do not serve any function. So, some examples of vestigial organs are muscles of pinna, so they do not serve a purpose. Cochics, that is the tailbone. So the tailbone is present in reduced form in human beings. Wisdom teeth. Now you would have seen that all the wisdom teeth, they are of no use. In fact, we do not have the wisdom teeth for quite some time. It, it, we get the wisdom teeth somewhere around um, 20 to 30 years of age. And these teeth, they do not help in biting or chewing or anything. Skeletal muscles to move eyebrows. Again, that also doesn't serve any function. Nipples in male, segmental muscles of abdomen, so all of these they are present but they really do not serve any function, they do not have any purpose to be present. So here you see which is not a vestigial part, segmental muscles of abdomen, so this is vestigial, fingernails, so fingernails is not vestigial, so fingernails are present but they also serve a purpose in the body. If you talk about the third molar, third molar is nothing but the wisdom teeth and the wisdom teeth is again vestigial, coccyx which is the tailbone is also vestigial and is present in the reduced form.
question number 24 in general in the developmental history of a mammalian heart it is observed that it passes through a two-chambered fish-like heart three-chambered frog-like heart and finally to four-chambered stage to which hypothesis can this above cited statement be approximated so basically when a mammalian heart develops or it grows so during its life history the mammalian heart is a four chambered heart but initially a two chambered heart is formed and then a three chambered heart is formed and then finally a four chambered heart is formed so what is happening so this is the life history of that particular mammal right so that is the ontogeny now during this ontogeny the mammal is actually passing through the stages of ancestral history that is, it is passing through the stages of resemblance with a fish, resemblance with a frog. So it is basically passing through the stages of evolutionary history. So this is the law given by, which is known as the biogenetic law, that is ontogeny repeats phylogeny. Ontogeny, that is life history of an animal, repeats phylogeny, which is the evolutionary history of that organism. Question number 25. Which one of the following statements about fossil human species is correct? Fossils of Homo neanderthalensis have been found recently in South America. So this is false because uh, Neanderthals were named so because their fossils were found in Neanderthal which is in Germany. So this is false. Neanderthal man and Cro-Magnon man did exist for some time together. Well, yes, uh, Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon man, they shared the European landscape for some 10,000 years or more before the Neanderthals di disappeared. So as we know that the Neanderthal man, their diet had iodine deficiency. So they suffered from cretinism and they disappeared quite quickly. But still, they shared some time together with Cro-Magnon man. So this statement is correct. Australopithecus fossils have been found in Australia. No, not really. Australopithecus is also known as the African ape man. Why? Because their fossils were found in Africa and not Australia. So this is incorrect. Homo erectus was preceded by Homo habilis. Now, if you look at the evolution of human beings, you would see that this is partially correct because Homo habilis came first and then came Homo erectus. So we can say that Homo erectus descended from Homo habilis. So that means both B and D are correct. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.